And there is Facebook. All right, y'all. Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly prophetic word. So let's have a word of prayer and uh, dive right in. <clears throat> Thank you, Father God, for your kingdom. Thank you, Father God, for the Savior. Thank you, Father God, for your spirit. Thank you, Father God, for your written word, Lord. So I just surrender to you right now, God. I thank you for this opportunity to be a part of your kingdom, oh God. So just fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill my tongue, my mind, my brain, my hand gestures, my mouth, my heart, oh God. Take over. Speak through me, oh God. I surrender to you, not my will, but thine be done. Speak to your people, oh Lord. Speak to me this day and let the words be spoken, uh, be the ones you want spoken to convey what thus saith the Lord, that you might be glorified, and that the saints might be edified, and that the demons might be terrified. And we thank you for it, we believe you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen and amen. <clears throat> Today's prophetic word is entitled, The Cloud. Today's prophetic word is entitled, The Cloud. And when the Holy Spirit first gave that to me, I had to, had to listen again. I'm like, you know, the cloud. And so looked that up and he showed me the scriptures and I'm like, okay, so I have, uh, you know, I'll show you our scripture foundation. But <clears throat> part of what I already know that the Lord is talking about is what's coming up in this season in terms of guidance. But let me read some scriptures to you, okay? I'm actually going to read to you several scriptures and we're going to zoom in on one of them to talk about the cloud. For those of you that aren't familiar with the uh, Old Testament experience, when the Lord was guiding the children of Israel once they had left Egypt and once they had gotten into the wilderness, to let them know where they were supposed to go day by day, he would have a pillar or a column that was made out of a cloud that guided them by day, and then he'd have that same pillar or that same column made out of fire that guided them at night. That's how they knew how to navigate when they were in the wilderness. So I guess that's a form of GPS. You know, I guess we could relate to that in that way, that it was some form of letting you know this is where God is today and this is where God wants you to go. So when they woke up in the morning, they literally had to say, where's the cloud? And when they found a cloud, that cloud represented God. And following that cloud represented following the will of God. And at night, if they had to travel at night, that cloud would turn into fire so they could see and have heat as well as light. And so they knew that to follow that pillar of fire, of fire at night meant to be following the will of God. Okay? So I'm going to read you several scriptures and we're going to zoom in on one. Exodus 13, 21 through 22. Exodus is the second book. In the Old Testament, the second book of the entire Bible, Genesis, Exodus, written by Moses, part of the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, the Torah is what the Jews call it, the Pentateuch is what we call it, us non-Jews, us Gentiles. Exodus 13, 21 to 22, by day the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so that they could travel by day or night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. Excuse me. Numbers 14, 14. And they will tell the inhabitants of this land about it. They have already heard that you, O Lord, are with these people and that you, O Lord, have been seen face to face, that your cloud stays over them and that you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Deuteronomy 1 and 33, who went in the way before you to search you out a place to pitch your tents in, in fire by night, to show you by what way you should go, and in a cloud by day. Psalms 99, 7, in a pillar of cloud he then spoke to them. They kept his testimonies and the statute he gave them. Nehemiah 9 and 12, by day you led them with a pillar of cloud, and by night with a pillar of fire to give them light on the way they were to take. Nehemiah 9 and 19. Because of your great compassion, you did not abandon them in the desert. By day, the pillar of cloud did not cease to guide them on their path, nor the pillar of fire by night to shine on the way they were to take. So already you ought to be able to see some commonalities. You ought to be able to see some parallels. You ought to be able to see uh, what's going on there. So we're going to zoom in on Exodus 
1321. Uh, I'm reading out of the Berean Study Bible. And the Lord went before them in a pillar of cloud to guide their way by day, and in a pillar of fire to give them light at night, so that they could travel by day or night. Neither the pillar, verse 22, neither the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of, fly, of fire by night, left its place before the people. So what God is saying to us, because uh, today's prophetic word is the cloud, okay? Let me turn this light on. I'm wondering why I was looking kind of dark over there. Uh, so what God is saying to us in this modern day through this lesson is, as we come into this 2020 season, what God is going to do is he's going to give you that clear guidance. He's going to give you guidance like he gave the children of Israel to where whether you are uh, moving or traveling or doing business, whatever you're doing by day or by night, God is going to direct your way. Okay? And so uh, it says, And the Lord went before them in a pillar of cloud to guide their way by day. So God's going to go before you. That's very significant. That's, you know, because we're, we're always excited that God is with us. But this says the Lord is going to go before us. You know what that means? That means that wherever it is you're trying to go, the Lord has already been there first because he went before you. If this is you, then here's the Lord. He got there first. So he went before you, okay, to guide your way by day and a pillar of fire to give them light at night so they could travel by day or night. What the Holy Spirit is telling me as I'm talking is a lot of believers do not believe God on that level. So right now, I release unto you a spirit of faith to receive the details of God, to receive the instruction of God, to receive the guidance of God on a brand new level. Whew. Blow that spirit out. Why? Because a lot of people don't believe that the spirit of God will guide you like that, but he will. If sometimes if you're trying to decide which way to drive on the highway, you can ask the Holy Ghost, which way am I supposed to go? They might have construction that you don't know yet that your Siri or your GPS doesn't know. And a lot of y'all don't believe God on that level. You just think that sounds crazy. But it doesn't sound crazy. If God knows you're going to meet someone when you're out that's going to be significant, the Holy Spirit might touch you and say to dress a certain way. Because before you come back home, you're going to encounter someone that's going to be a positive connection. And obviously you want to look well, as opposed to going out in sweats. And, you know, if you have hair, with your hair all messed up and all that. And a lot of people don't believe God on that level. A lot of people don't believe that God speaks to people on that level, okay? But he does. He absolutely does. And what he's telling us going into this 2020 season is that he's going to begin to, begin to give guidance on that level. But you have to hear it. Somebody has to preach it to you. And then you have to believe it. You have to say it. And then you have to start looking for it to manifest in your life. You have to start looking for God to guide you day by day. Because the Bible says here that he did that for them. And the Bible says that we as Gentiles, we as New Testament Christians, we have a better covenant with God based on better promises. So that means that we have at least the blessings and the benefits that they have, plus more, or else you can't call it better. So <clears throat> God is going to, in this 2020 season, begin to guide you in, in a manner and at a level that you haven't seen yet, so you have to be ready for it, because you don't want to miss it. Because normally the, the leading of the Holy Spirit is very gentle, sometimes almost imperceptible to the point where if you weren't being quiet, if you weren't paying attention, you might miss it. Very quiet, very still, very gentle, like a dove, to let you know which way to go. And you have to believe him for the small details of your life. Okay? And then it says, in a pillar of fire to give them light at night. What that means uh, in a literal sense is exactly what it said, that when it was nighttime, he was guiding them with fire so it would light their way. What that means in the allegorical sense is that if you're not sure which way to go, God will light your path. God will illuminate. God will say, if you have choice A, B, and C, and you don't know which one is the will of God, then the Holy Ghost will make choice B shine and light up in front of you to let you know that's the choice, that's the right one. That's what that means. Okay? Because I declare unto you that when, when things come before you, if you want to know whether they are of God or not, what will happen is that the Spirit of God will give a witness. 
He will witness with your spirit as to whether or not something is or is not of the will of God. And if it is of the will of God, he will light it up. He will light your spirit up. The anointing of God and the fire of God will witness on the inside of you that this thing is the thing. Very, very important. Okay? That's why a lot of people are not in good relationships. Romantic relationships, business relationships, friendship relationships. Because God will guide you to the people he wants you to be in relationship with, and then he will light that relationship up with his anointing. Okay? So it says, a pillar of cloud to guide the way by day, and a pillar of fire to give them light by a light at night, so they could travel by day or night. So that means it's not going to matter what time of day you're trying to do your business. The Lord will be with you, and he'll light your path. But then verse 22 says, neither the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night, left its place before the people. Oh my goodness. So the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night, left its place in front of the people. Do you know what that means? It doesn't just mean that God is with you. It means that God is always with you. It doesn't just mean that God will guide you. It means that God will always guide you. Okay? And this is pointing to that verse that says, <clears throat> I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So what that means is that you can count on God to be there for you every day. Some of you that are already at that level in your faith walk with God, you, you've experienced that and you know that's true. Some of you that aren't there yet, God is causing me to release his word to bring your faith up to understand that you don't have to be wishy-washy anymore. You don't have to be up and down. You don't have to be in or out. You don't have to worry, you know, am I in his will or not? Or, you know, I'm having an up day or I'm having a down day because God doesn't have any down days. Please show me where God has a down day. God doesn't have any down days. Okay? Just like some people say, well, service was good today. God doesn't have any bad services. When does God have a bad service? Okay? The only thing is always the same thing that we have to pay attention to is, are we listening? Okay? Well, service wasn't anointed today. No, that just means you didn't listen to what the Holy Ghost wanted to do. Okay? Because whenever the Spirit of God is trying to move and do what He's going to do, He's going to release His power. He's going to release the anointing to highlight, this is what glorifies Jesus. This is what pleases Jesus. Because the Holy Ghost is only here to say what Jesus is saying and to point everyone to the head of the church. Okay? So God doesn't have any down days. And God doesn't have any bad services. So if you go to church and you felt like the service wasn't good, it means that y'all missed the Holy Ghost because God doesn't change. How can God have a bad day? What is he afraid of? What is he worried about? Does he need a cheeseburger? How does God have a bad day? You see that? And so, <clears throat> again, for many of you listening to me, this might be the first time in your life or in your, your Christian walk anybody ever told you that God will guide you on that level. But he will. He will guide you on that level. So if you have choices in front of you, you can pray in tongues, pray in the Spirit, and ask the Lord, which one of these things is your will for me? And then the Spirit of God will highlight it, and you can choose it, and you can know this is a choice of God for me. Okay? That's how you pick a college. That's how you pick a place to live. That's how you pick a car. Okay? You got choices. You got options. You pray in tongues. You bring the Holy Ghost into the situation. You ask the Holy Ghost, which one of these choices is the right one for me? And the Spirit of God will illuminate it for you. Okay? Now, I want to move on to another use of the cloud that's found in two other verses. I'm going to read 2 Chronicles 5.14, and I'm going to read 1 Kings 8.11. 1 2 Chronicles 5.14. Uh, let me start at 13. Yeah, 2 Chronicles 5.13 and 14. The trumpeters and singers joined together to praise and thank the Lord with one voice. They raised their voices accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and musical instruments in praise to the Lord. For he is good, his loving devotion endures forever. Then the temple, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not stand there to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. 1 Kings 8, 11, and when the, uh, starting with verse 10, 10 and 11, and when the priests came out of the holy place, the cloud filled the house of the Lord, 
so that the priests could not stand there to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. <clears throat> that word glory coming out of the Hebrew means weight, it means splendor, it means copiousness. Oh my goodness, weight, splendor, and copiousness. So what did the Bible just tell us? The Bible just told us that not only does God want to use his cloud to guide you, but God wants to give you his glory cloud. And in his glory cloud, his glory has weight. His glory has splendor. That means it's, it's shiny and bright and, and beautiful. And it has copiousness. You, we use that phrase, copious amounts of alcohol, copious amounts of pizza, copious amounts of chocolate. It means lots and lots and lots. Okay? So what the Bible is saying here is that the cloud, the glory cloud of God, does not just give us guidance, but it brings the weight, the splendor, and all the copious amounts of blessings and glory and beauty that God has. And God wants to fill the house with his weight of glory. That's not just talking about the temple where we worship, although it does mean that. It also means this house. It means your body, your life. Okay? That God wants to fill, fill you with the weight of his glory. Okay? Now, for some of you that have been walking in that a while, that may not be news to you, so you just may be taking that glory to another level. For some of you that, that have never heard that before, did you know that you can operate with the weight, the glory of God on you? So not only to guide you, but also when you're doing what you're doing, that the, the weight of the glory of God can be present in what you're doing. Let me give you an example. I'm going to give you an example from my own life. And this is not boasting. I'm just talking about my life because I can't talk about anybody else's life. But I, I was uh, ministering to someone and having a conversation with someone. And I was talking about one of my uh, Christmas books. And I realized as we were going through it that the Spirit of God really led me to make it as much of a ministry tool as he did an ABC book. And I, because the, the Christian version talks about the history of things that were going on around the time that Jesus was born, and then he gives scriptures to help teach the kids or whatever, you know, readers or learners about the accurate history about the birth of Christ. And I was seeing how, you know, God could use that, and I wasn't really completely thinking about that when I made it. I was thinking more so about just being sure that we had a book that spoke to our Christian belief, but now I was seeing how God can use that to, to bring his glory on the life of a young reader, to help him understand what happened when Jesus came in the world. And that's what I mean when I say that when God gets in something, he wants to put his glory on it. He wants to put his glory on your life. Okay? So, I release unto you, my people, a spirit of faith to believe God for the cloud. Believe God for the cloud uh, the pillar of a cloud that will guide you by day and the pillar of fire that will guide you at night. Believe God for the glory cloud, for the weight of his glory to come on your life and to be present in all that you do. We release that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So if you believe that and you receive that, it happened right now. Remember, everything with God is right now. It's not five minutes from now. It's not next week. It's not next Sunday. It's right now. That means from this moment forward, God is going to begin to guide your every step and make his will plain to you. And it also means that his glory and his weight is going to be on everything that you do. So you no longer have to live your life wondering what's next, wondering what does God want me to do. And you don't have to live your life on your own strength. But the very weight of the splendor of God and all that comes with his glory can be on what you do. And that will take everything in your career, your platonic relationships, your family relationships, your finances, to a whole new level once the glory of God gets on it. Okay? So you hear me say it all the time. Don't just talk about the responsibilities of being a Christian, because we have those. We have lots of those. There are lots of things we're responsible for doing as believers. But don't just talk about the responsibilities. Talk about the benefits. Talk about the benefits of being a Christian, because the Bible says... Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not 
all his benefits. And one of the benefits that we get to have as believers in Christ is that not only do we get the guidance of God day or night, but we get his weight of glory on all that we do. Okay? So believe that, receive that, and walk in that starting today. Okay. If you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen right now. <clears throat> uh, when you see me close my eyes and pray in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost if there are any more prophetic words, any demons that need to be cast out, that's deliverance, any physical healing that needs to be released, and any financial words. Okay? Erica. Erica, that normally watches me on Facebook Live, God is saying, you are elevated. That's why the enemy has been attacking you. You are elevated to the next level, and God is busy lifting you up. And that's why the enemy has been coming after you with sickness and trouble and persecution, because God is lifting up your influence. So God is lifting up your sphere of influence, and you're going to be a blessing to many more people. I actually see it mushrooming out this way. So, Erica uh, Williams, you're going to be a blessing to many more people than you have been in the past. That's why the enemy is attacking you. Don't let that discourage you because God is lifting you up, says the Spirit of the living God. Uh, let me see if there's anything else. Okay, I see uh, my friend Stacy is watching. Stacy, the Lord is saying to you, He's saying, open doors. That there are open doors. Open doors, and those doors are higher than where you are right now. Yeah, the prophetic word to you, Stacy, is open doors. So God is saying, He's opened doors for you. So get ready to walk through them and walk through them with boldness and confidence. Don't apologize. Don't look back. But those open doors are higher than where you are right now. So not only is God going to lift you up, but he's going to take you through those open doors. Says the spirit of the living God. Somebody listen to me named Carmen. Carmen, whoever it is you are out there, God is saying to you that the blood of Jesus has forgiven you. You might still be struggling with guilt or maybe someone's trying to bring up the sins of your past. But God is saying to you, daughter, Carmen, that the blood of Jesus has washed you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Your sins were nailed to the cross of Christ and you bear them no more. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Carmen, claim the precious blood of Jesus as the payment for your sins and also the cleansing agent that washes you clean so you don't have to live like you did in the past. And don't listen to the haters and the persecutors, because if God has forgiven you, then you are forgiven. Okay? If the blood of Jesus is good enough for God, it's supposed to be good enough for us. It is good enough for us. It's good enough for me. If God says you're forgiven, then you're forgiven. If God says you're clean, then you're clean. And forget what the haters and the persecutory people say. Listen to what Jesus is saying, that I shed my blood for your sins to, to forgive you, to wipe the debt off of your record, and to cleanse you, to wipe it out of your spirit and your soul so you don't have to walk in it anymore. Amen. Okay, there's somebody out there listening to me named Camilla. Camilla, God says to you that you've been stuck in a rut too long. You've been in the same place too long. God is ready to to, to show you new things in the world. God is ready to take you to new places, but he needs you to believe him. So God is going to need you to forgive and let go of everything that you were holding on to. Everything in your mind that speaks to the old and receive that God is able to do something new. It doesn't have to make sense to you. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to figure it out in your head. You just have to believe it and receive it because God is able Camilla, God is able to breathe a fresh new breath into your life and take you to new places that you haven't seen yet. And to, to, to embrace that blessing to the fullness, you have to take off, you have to shed the old. 
So any, any clothes, any weight, any chains, any past memories, anything that's tethering you, that's binding you to your past, God says, shed it. Take it off. Take off those old clothes. I'm going to give you some new garments and take you forward to a new thing. Says the Spirit of the Living God to you, Camilla. Okay, that's it. Praise God. Well, I'm excited. Uh, uh, when you minister the Word of God, the Word of God is always to you first. So I'm excited about uh, watching God guide me day by day and night by night. I'm excited about living in His glory. I'm already seeing it begin to manifest in ways I didn't even realize. I didn't even realize. But now I'm seeing it as, as the Spirit of God begins to open my eyes because we want to get the right idea in the heads of children. Don't you understand that right ideas when you're young saves you time and trouble when you're grown? One more time. Right ideas when you're young saves you a bunch of time and trouble when you're grown. And you've got 10 years, the first 10 years of your life, you are wide open. You are open book. All you want to do is drink up everything mom and daddy say. Think about it. So if we can get the right ideas in the hands of the kids, that means you can grow up with truth. Okay? And I'm excited about an opportunity like that. All right? All right. Amen and amen. Well, this, this word bless my soul. I hope it bless yours. Remember that I'm here every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, every Sunday. And then I'm here on the second Thursday of each month. So that means the next time I'm going to be back talking about No More Genies is going to be on November 14th. Okay, so November 14th is when I'm going to do my next installment of No More Genies, November 14th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, Facebook and Periscope. And then uh, one of these days, I'm going to live stream on YouTube. I'm working on getting that together. But for right now, the video, the replay is up on YouTube as well. Okay? And I will be here next Sunday. Man, we are into November already. Wow. I will be here next Sunday, November 3rd at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for your weekly prophetic word. All right? Amen. God bless you. Expect God to guide you with that cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. And expect the weight of his glory to be on all that you do as you walk in step and in sync with him and stay in his will. All right. Amen. Have a great week. Have a great rest of your Sunday. And God bless.